Thanks for joining today's webinar. The topic is a better way to communicate boost patient engagement. And we will present uh, this today uh, through Dr. Bull. Uh, presenting will be Ajit Wishranathan. Ajit is the CEO of Dr. Bull. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone that you can ask questions in the box in the lower right hand corner of the, the window in your WebEx. Additionally, a recording of this webinar will be sent out to anyone that's registered, so you'll be able to view this uh, on demand later or share it with your colleagues um, or office. Uh, and now I'm going to turn it over to Ajit. Thank you so much, Chris. Hi, folks. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you all for attending the webinar today. I'm really excited, and I see a few familiar names here, too. So uh, thanks for uh, your time today. And uh, one of the things that we want to focus on today uh, is a better way to communicate and how you can boost your patient engagement. And I know this has been something that's very prevalent, especially in the last year or so, uh, because I can only uh, assume that a lot of your practices and staff members are burdened with these extra administrative tasks that come with making sure that you're running a safe practice. Well, at the same time, how do we make sure that you're still being able to take care of these things in a way that both your staff and patients feel is hugely beneficial. And so the first thing I want to talk about a lot today is about you know, this concept of this on-demand patient, right? Because we all have seen the statistics in uh, healthcare with texting. I think we all understand that texting is very convenient. In fact, as a research study is done, uh, if you look at texting or SMS, uh, the open rates are you know, in excess of 99%. And that's a pretty shocking statistic because you know, the, the question I always ask folks is that, you know, if you look at your email inbox, you know, guess how many hundred messages you folks typically have, right? I mean, I would presume anywhere from a few 10, 20 to hundreds, if not thousands. Uh, but if you look at most people's uh, texting inbox and, you know, just you use yourself as an example, how many hundred messages you have inside your uh, SMS inbox, and the answer would be probably less than two or it most likely zero. And that convenience aspect and the, the uh, and how easy it is to get to that inbox is one of the big reasons why not only is the open rate so high, if you look at the second statistic, 90% of the patient messages are being read within three minutes. And this is data that we can validate even from Doctable's platform. We send in excess of a million messages a month uh, to see how quickly patients are responding. So when you come back to this concept of this on-demand patient, what I really mean about that is, you know, when you take a look at our patient demographic, uh, these are very savvy consumers outside of their healthcare vertical. So when you look at them consuming other aspects of their life, whether it's going to, uh, you know, hail a, a car, with, which is Uber, or DoorDash with their restaurant delivery, right? And so every aspect of their life has now come in where things are a lot more instantaneous, right? I mean, you want the patient to be able to, uh, sorry, the consumer to be able to get access to things right off the bat. And so that same consumer is the one who's actually walking into your practice too. So the expectations have become pretty drastically high in the last few years because of how quickly they're used to getting that information or how quickly they're used to being able to talk to the other person without ever lifting up the handset. And so we have to kind of like get used to that trend that's happening, which is how do we get, get texting a lot more prevalent because the patient demographic is used to this for all the other aspects of their life, right? And so that's where the on-demand patient comes in because their expectation of your practice and how they want to interact with you and the, your doctor is very much the same as they would be doing in other assets, uh, aspects of their life. And so let me kind of talk about the important piece now, which is a little bit boring, but I promise you we'll get to jump into the actual meat of the park in just a bit, because this is a question that gets asked uh, quite a lot around compliance, right? I mean, you know, what is texting and HIPAA compliance and all of that jazz that comes with it? And so let me ask the very most important, address the most important question first, which is, is texting HIPAA compliant? I think many of you are wondering, uh, I think you might be, uh, you might want to get into texting, but you're not really sure. Uh, what I would say is 
Um, when I say texting HIPAA compliancy, I'm talking about software such as DACO, right? I mean, uh, one thing that is not HIPAA compliant is, for example, if you're using your cell phone to communicate with patients for various reasons, including BA and then data retention, you don't want to be using your cell phone. That's not uh, HIPAA compliant texting, but be using software that are built for healthcare texting. Are they HIPAA compliant? That's kind of like what I want to cover very briefly here. And so the first question is, can you text patients? The answer is yes, you can. Uh, but at the same time, you have to be mindful of HIPAA. I mean, that's a saying out here in Docto, which is, you know, HIPAA is a lifestyle here, right? It's not something that is something that we have to think about uh, when on an ask needed basis. It's something that we have to think about constantly. And so here's something specifically on the HIPAA security rule that you have to be very mindful of, right? And that's the reason why you'll see that the cell phone fails some of these controls that have been put in place with HIPAA. So PHI, which is protected health information. So access to the PHI must be limited only to authorized users inside the practice, right? So only to the people who are do required that to do their jobs. And so, of course, you have to have those controls in place. Uh, so then, of course, they can text patients. Uh, second is those who do have authorization to access PHI, they must authenticate through a login, right? Because you want to make sure that you're tracking who's the right uh, staff member who's logged in and be able to have those audit controls in place. So one other reason why, you know, the cell phone fails because multiple people could be handling that cell phone at the same time. Whereas in software, you can create new logins for each one of your team members. So you know exactly who's logging in and sending out these messages. Uh, policies and procedures must be introduced to prevent PHI from being inappropriately altered or destroyed. So this is also a very key element, which is when you do send that message to the patient through a text message, it's got to be retained, right? I mean, if you ever need those records in the future, for whatever reason, you want to have a software that has data retention policies, right? And so that's again a reason why in cell phone if that fails, because in a cell phone, people can delete the text messages anytime they want, right? And so that's why you want to be able to retrieve these records at a later time. And then the last one, very critical, which is the data transmitted beyond an organization internal firewall should be encrypted and make it unusable if it's intercepted in transit. So obviously these messages are flying across different platforms and different uh, websites. We well, want to make sure that that message is encrypted, which means is it's protected and no one can, even if they intercept it, cannot read it because it, it goes under a strong authentication and encryption behind the scenes. So that's the reason why, you know, if you take a look at all these different controls, then absolutely texting is HIPAA compliant when you use the software, right? So the next big question that when we work with many of our next gen customers, they ask the question is, do I need consent from the patient? Right? Again, a very good question that gets asked because there's a lot of rules around texting and you do not want to get into trouble for texting a patient incorrectly as long as you bound to get these rules. So for what happened was in 2015, the FCC, which is the Federal Communications Division, they, they attempted to clarify certain issues related to the healthcare industry because there was a failure for the TCPA, which is a very critical federal act that was released in the early 90s, which is called the Telephony Consumer Protection Act. And that relates to calls and texting uh, just consumers in general, right? In addition to just patients, consumers in general. And so the FCC created an exemption in 2015 because there's a lot of uh, un you know, unclarity on whether can you really text a patient without them like checking a box in your paperwork or can they, they have to respond with saying, yes, you can send me a text message, right? And so what the FCC said is, you, there are certain types of messages that the practice can send to the patient without requiring their prior consent. So this does not require the patient to explicitly say that you can text me. The fact that they're a patient who gave yourself, who gave their phone number to you, you can actually send them a text message without that prior consent. And, but it has to be related to only certain types of messages. And, you know, those are related to appointments and exams, uh, confirmations and reminders, right? That's how uh, a lot of these software send out appointment confirmations and reminders is because it's given under that exemption. Uh, wellness checkups, right? If you ever want to recall them for their annual uh, checkup, well, that's part of their wellness checkup, please, right? So you can again text them uh, pre registrations so if you want to send out your intake forms pre-op instructions, right? I mean, you want them to get ready for your uh, procedure or for coming into the practice. 
lab results, post-op instructions, prescription notifications, home health instructions. So these are all the kind of messages where you can actually text a patient without requiring a consent from them. So hopefully that clarifies the topic because uh, you know, I'm glad that a lot of you are thinking from that perspective because you want to be safe and protect the practice. But when it relates to these things, you can absolutely text the patients, um, you know, using a, uh, using a software such as Doctor. So now the next question is, even if you can text patients, you still have to be compliant, right? I mean, there's there's rules and regulations, and that's why, you know, we try to help you be compliant with all these different uh, rules that are in place. So even though the patient may not have given you express consent. There's certain things you have to be mindful of. One is, you know, the text message must be only sent to the cell phone number provided by the patient. So if it's in your EHR, uh, you can text that patient, but we cannot be texting uh, random phone numbers just because you know you you came out, you had access to that particular phone number. Uh, the name and the contact information of the practice must be stated in the text message. Uh, you have to identify the source to the patient on who is sending this message, right? And so you want to be able to list out your practice name and your phone number. Uh, the text message cannot include telemarketing or solicitation or advertising. This is critical, right? Um, as much as the phone number is available to you and you can text them, anything that is considered marketing, that is not allowed by the regulations. So if you're trying to say that, look, you know, if you come in, um, you know, there's a free XYZ that a gift that we can provide to you. All of those things can get you in trouble. So you want to keep it very strictly towards uh, pure consumption of healthcare as opposed to anything related to marketing via text message. And the last piece, which is very critical, which is every message must offer the recipient, which in this case, the patient, an easy way to opt out of future messages, right? So it's, uh, it's a requirement where if a patient re responds with stop, that means that no one in that group is allowed to text that patient because they've just opted out receiving all future messages. And these are the kind of things that typically practices or even healthcare systems, if you look at kind of like why they got into trouble with the law, is they violated one of these different rules that come into play. So as long as you're well within these bounds, you, you should be fully compliant and not be hesitant to be able to text other patients. And the reason for that is this is the platform that your patients prefer. And so the one thing I want you folks to do an analysis on, I mean, you don't have to do it right now, but you know, you know the example I was giving you is picture a patient at your practice, right? It's Saturday, 7 p.m. They want to seek an appointment with you. Um, you don't have to publicly disclose it, but on a scale of one to 10, how easy do you think it is for them to communicate with your practice about that appointment, right? Whether they want to seek an appointment or they have a question about the appointment. The reason I'm asking you to do the self-analysis is this is what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, we are of course available from our practice anywhere from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. But the question you have to be asking yourself is, well, that might be the time that my patients are at work too. Well, they're having questions about their healthcare needs when they're free, which is after hours, which is of course when you're not available. And so how do you make sure that you have that intersection where the patient can very easily communicate with you? So uh, hopefully this this sparks some thought for you as far as like putting yourself in the patient's shoes because that is critical on how you want them to be able to reach out to you. And so the step number one that is very important is the availability. How do you make sure that you're always available to your patients? And there's going to be a few things that I'm going to talk about on this aspect. So step you know step one is it's all about being found online, right? I mean if you if you look at it. Most of the patients these days are discovering you and your practice from your Google search or Yelp or you name it. And you wanna make sure that you're representing your practice in the most accurate way possible. The second thing is the front door to your website, which is, uh, which is your website, right? I mean, that's what most patients typically click on to find out more information. And then the last piece on your availability is, how do you always stay in touch with your patients? Right? It's one thing to be discovered but also once patients come visit your practice, are there tools you can use to constantly stay engaged with your patients? That's very important because they gotta know your practice front and center in their mind when it's the right time for them, right? So that's all about intent. And that's where most of the marketing technologies they might be seeing is tries to capture intent. And so we wanna be able to do the same thing. Well, step number one is to always have your practice name front and center with your patient base. 
So one thing I always advise to all of our clients who come in is there's this new uh, page called your Google page. And this is a very critical page that's being built for all practices. And what that does is uh, I highly encourage all of you after this call, just do a quick search on your practice name on Google. And you'd be surprised that you will probably see something that either you are not aware of or some information that's not correct, or you might see those reviews. So it's very important because this is the first thing that patients are displayed, even if they're searching for you on your maps to get the directions, or if they're searching for your phone number. So essentially what it becomes is a very important way for them to find your practice. And so that's the reason why the Google search becomes very critical for you. Additionally, uh, the reviews that you see are critical for you folks, right? I mean, this is how patients are finding you at this point. They are taking an absolute social proof on what other patients are saying about your practice. And that's why it's very important that your happy patients are going online. Again, you might be surprised to see that you have a lot of reviews or not many reviews, but the key thing here is you need to see if there are reviews. And then the last thing here is this is again, you know, the first thing that the patient is seeing. So give patients the way that they want to reach out to you. So some patients will call you, no doubt about that. But there are going to be many patients who are used to booking online. And so having a link for online booking is also critical in terms of like making it easier for the patients to be able to reach out to your practice. Um, when you go jump into your website, I mean, this is a next gen office customer. They've done a, a tremendous job in terms of like increasing the Google reviews, but also staying up to date with their particular website, right? I mean, one of the most critical things that patients are paying attention to these days is, you know, how has COVID impacted the practice? And so if you look at kind of like this website, the Cornerstone, but they did a great job addressing that right on their homepage because this makes patients feel that their practice is right on top of what the current trends are. Uh, additionally, they have a chat functionality. Uh, this is important because Again, put yourself in the picture of that patient on a Saturday at 7 p.m. on your website, right? What can they do to be able to interact? Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about tools like a chat, but there's also tools which not only does a live chat with a human being, but can also automatically start reaching out and talking to these patients. So those are all called chatbot, which is pretty intelligent because they'll start answering, like, for example, what insurances do you take? You know, do you do uh, uh, you know a particular procedure? All of those things can be guided conversations. Having those kind of tools in your website really ensures that the patient who came in can now have their questions answered so that they can come in for an appointment. Uh, and then I can't tell you the last one seems very simple, but I've been I've been to complex websites where it is so hard to find the phone number or the address of the practice. And that's one of the first things that they're looking for, right? When they come to the website, initially the intent is to call. And that's the reason why have your phone numbers, you know, highlighted somewhere right on the top, just so that it's easily accessible. So some small things they can do on your website just even today can have huge gains for you folks starting tomorrow. Um, and then the last thing we talked about, you know, how do you stay front and center with your patients and have your practice in front of them, right? Now, this is where patient engagement really comes into handy. You want to be able to outreach to your patients, informing them about updates that's going on. Remember, you're, you're their expert, right? I mean, they're looking to you to lean on you to see if you have any updates about a particular, you know, you know, how, how you know, what about their health, right? And so this is the part where you can send out monthly newsletters. Now, newsletters are all sent by email, so you can send them out, you know, pretty much to a pretty large base and you don't have to worry about, you know, the opt in opt out. Now there are rules around email too. You might have all heard about can spam, uh, which is the can spam act, which is, you know, we want to make sure there's an unsubscribe button, all of those good things that make sure that you don't end up spamming the patients, but at the same time, sending out newsletters, like, for example, you do a charity drive or you have a new staff member join, or you have a new location that you launch. Those are great ways to stay in touch with your patients. Uh, like, you know, especially in the last few months, a lot of our customers have added the telehealth as an option. And when patients see that as an option that they can take access to, well, that might be the difference between them taking that advantage of that or 
just deferring their appointment, which is not doing their health any favors, right? And so that's why patient outreach through a campaign's newsletter module is very critical for you to stay front and center with their minds. Um, appointment reminders. I think this is something I cannot, uh, you know, say emphasize enough on how critical in this day and age appointment reminders are. Uh, I know some practices still like the the ability to call a patient, and again, there's nothing wrong with that part. But if you really look at the patients, and you know, one of the key trends that you're seeing uh, that there's a lot of robocalls that happen, uh, which is essentially you get these phone calls, and then when you answer the phone call. It's like this car warranty or something else. It's like a telemarketing offer. It's a huge problem in the industry. The reason I'm saying that is an issue is the, most of the software these days, if you look at your iPhones, or if you look at your Android phones, have now built in software that says that we will no longer ring the phone if the patient if if you're not a contact inside the address book. And I will tell you that I'm a personal user of that one of those softwares, right? So Basically, if someone's not on my contact list on my phone, um, it won't even ring. And so it's going to go directly to your voicemail. And so that leads to problem for you because if patients do not add their cell phone, they add your phone number into the address book of them, you'll see that more and more as months and years go by, you're going to stumble into a lot more voicemails, which is hugely inefficient because you have to leave a voicemail and the patient's going to call you back and then an inbound phone call becomes disruptive. And that's where appointment reminders really come in handy. And I'm not going to go through too in depth with the timeline, but any appointment reminder software that you use and pick from, you want to make sure that it accomplishes three things for you. One is it's got to help you prevent reschedules. It's got to give the patient advanced notification of an appointment. Second, it's going to help you prevent no shows. You all know the impact a no show can have at the practice, right? And so making sure that the patient shows up to the practice is very important. And the third piece that doesn't get talked about enough, but it's also a very important piece that you all would appreciate is the impact of late shows. You want to make sure that any software that comes through is able to provide the patient with a traffic alert an hour before the appointment, be able to say that, look, it's going to take you 40 minutes to get to the appointment. So you want to make sure that you leave early on because a patient who shows up to your practice 10, 15 minutes late now has a domino effect on the schedule. That's the kind of ways that you want to leverage this automation. Now, full disclosure, automated reminders is not going to cover 100% of a patient base. I don't think any software can do it. But if you look at the perspective that somewhere between 70 to 80% of your patients end up confirming their appointments through a software, then your staff is only focusing on the 20% who need a phone call. And those are ways that you can really better communicate with the patients with tools that they prefer to, right? I mean, and that's kind of like where the appointment reminders comes through. This is an example of the traffic alerts. So notice this is key because patients are leading busy lifestyles and they might think that the practice is only 20 minutes away and then they find out there's a freeway closure and it's going to take them 37 minutes. Well, that's a problem right now because they're going to show up to your practice late and they have to do their intake forms and now it's a pretty big long wait time at this point, right? And so that's the reason why these are all convenience tools, but it's around your availability too, because your job is to inform the patient, here's what we think you should, when you should be living, and it really helps. And patients love this part too, because imagine and picture yourself, right? You're a patient who is about to leave an important work meeting to go to your doctor's appointment, and then you get in the car, and then you're fumbling around trying to find the name of the practice on Google Maps, and it's very confusing, right? And if you look at the convenience aspect where if I just look at my text message and right there, there's a Google Maps link that's going to take me directly to the doorstep, that's, you know, that may not be the sole reason why they pick you, but it's a reason why they appreciate what you do for you, right? And so that's the reason why tools like these really come in handy. And then the last piece in terms of like, you know, these texting tools is when you look at Despite doing everything, whether it's phone calls or texting, patients are tend to, you know, no show on you every once in a while. Well, you want to bring these patients back to your practice right off the bat, right? Because these are patients who had a guaranteed appointment on your calendar. And you can't just let them go by and wait for a few months before they come, up, come back in. So you want to use tools that can automatically reach out to these patients the day after and saying, hi, John, we missed you at the practice yesterday. Would you like to reschedule your appointment? And that really helps the patient saying, hey, I'm really sorry, I had an important meeting pop up. Yes, do you have something coming in for next Tuesday? 
Notice all of this is happening fully automated through texting and not one phone call was made. And that's kind of like the direction that you want to take your practice towards as you, you know, I would have said as we enter the 21st era, but you know, we're already there. So as you continue to expand as technology comes into play out here. Um, you know, we're talking about availability, which is very correlated to convenience. I want to talk about a few more things around the convenience aspect. Um, you know, this comes back to, you know, the power of the patient. The patients are so empowered these days where they get to pick and choose where they want to go to consume their healthcare. So you want to make it easy for them. And so the two areas is giving the patients tools to easily reach you and then e engaging with them even when you're not available. Right? Those are the key elements to this. So you know, we talked about texting as a very important piece, but a missing piece of texting is, for example, you know, this is also an action office customer. What they did is they put right on their website, if you notice in the top part of the screen, they gave the option to the patient that you can call or text us at our phone number. Well, that is pretty unique because if I was a patient and I show up to the practice website at, let's just say, 9 o'clock at night, if I saw that the option exists for me to text them, well, that makes it a lot more easier for me to engage with them, right? Because it's a matter of simple, hey, do you have any appointments available for a Monday morning? I seem to, uh, you know, have some, some issues that I want to talk to you about. That can be the difference between the patient scaling an appointment as opposed to waiting till Monday, then something else comes up, life gets in the way, they forget. So you want to make sure that you're as available as possible because some patients will absolutely take that option to text you. Some will take the option to call you. You just want to give those options across the board. Um, you know, this is a live example that, you know, we, we display of how a customer of ours uses texting to greatly reduce the phone calls that they make, right? So this is, if you look at in October of 2019, at 824 in the morning, uh, you know, the practice actually sent out a message to the patient saying, look, I received your message. So presumably they got a voicemail. I have a couple of openings for an exam on Wednesday, October 9th in the afternoon. Please let me know if you're interested in an appointment. So this was a manual text that was sent out by the patient for the, for the staff. Look at the patient responding at 842 saying, thank you. Unfortunately, I'll be out of town this Wednesday. Do you have any appointments the following Wednesday? At 916, the practice is responding. I have a 233 or 330 on 1016. Will any of those work for you? I'll take the 230 on 1016. So notice how seamless this conversation was without ever lifting the handset. And the and the, the great thing about texting is in the industry, we call it asynchronous uh, communication. What that means is that if the patient made a phone call, both the patient and the staff had to be on the phone call at the same time. That means that you can only handle one patient and in, in one phone call. So it's a synchronous communication. They both have to be in sync. Whereas with texting, it could be that the patient sent the text message at 842, the practice can respond to the text message 5, 10, half an hour later. And so they don't both have to be on at the same time. And so that's the reason why it's called asynchronous communication. Why is that helpful? Well, your staff can handle multiple conversations at the exact same time. And that's the example of how phone calls start becoming less and less. It never goes away, but it greatly reduces in terms of the number of phone calls you and your team are making at the time. So hopefully that gives you a live example of how things work. Let me talk to you a little bit more about promoting convenience. We talked about uh, the chat option. I highly recommend also having tools like online appointments. Um, this is also something we've seen a huge shift these days from patients wanting tools like this, right? Being able to request an appointment online. Uh, and look, we don't want to uh, confuse healthcare and restaurants or hotels, right? Because they're, they're not even close in comparison. But the same patient is using online scheduling when they have to book in a uh, restaurant. How many of you have used open table, right? So the reason I state that is not because, you know, restaurants and healthcare is the same, I state that because these patients are being trained on a day-to-day -day basis that that's how you go about doing your daily tasks, right? Being able to have that ease of use and convenience to be able to request an appointment to my doctor without having to make a phone call. And that's the key part of this whole puzzle is giving as many tools as possible. Uh, I don't want to say that everybody's going to use online scheduling or texting, uh, but you want to give that broad options where some patients will call, some patients will text, some patients will chat on the website. Some patients will use online scheduling. 
but you never want to give and miss out on a patient who did not have these different tools. And that's kind of like how you start promoting convenience to your patients. Um, so what I'd like to do is we're at the 30 minute mark. So I'd like to spend five minutes to just do a quick live demonstration of our platform. Just so you can see how texting can be so easy because sometimes people look at texting and saying, oh my God, is it going to take a lot of my time and my staff's time? And the key is that if the software is built uh, very easily, it's got to be intuitive enough for us to be able to send out a message. So what, I, what I've teed up for this demonstration is, in fact, you can search for your patients. So for example, in case of Docmo, this is a Docmo platform. It's cloud-based, so that means that you can actually access this platform just like you can with NextGen Office anywhere as long as you have an active internet connection. So that means that you can communicate to patients even right from your home or from your other location if need be, but you can search for your patients right from this interface. So we're constantly syncing the patient base with the dockable interface. So I'm gonna just pick Harry in this case. And so if you notice here, it will pull up the history of all of his communication. So it doesn't matter how long back you talked with Harry, we'll see all the messages, all the reminders. And also you can text Harry saying, hi Harry, could you please bring up your insurance card? Or you have all these different templates, right? Think about templates as things you can do again and again, where instead of you having to type in that message, you can easily just send out a text message. So I'm just gonna pick the insurance details template and I'm gonna send it to Harry. He's also on the, on the conference call right now. So he's gonna to respond to these messages in, in just a bit. What I want you to see is that not only is the response gonna be pretty quick, in fact, Harry is gonna send out a copy of a, a, a fake insurance card in this instance, right? And so these kind of texting tools support images. And so that's an easy way in case you forgot the group policy number of the, of the patient, or you need to get their latest insurance card for the file, you can say, hey patient, could you please send us a copy of your insurance card? And that's how quickly it will come through. So I'm just gonna wait for Harry to send in that text message, but Harry, why don't you just send in an okay also just so they can, they can see the text message that comes through just now. Because the reason why um, this text message is critical is picture yourself where the patient is curbside and wants to be able to send a copy of their, um, you know, just tell you that, hey folks, I'm waiting outside. You don't want them to be waiting outside at that time. So uh, I'm just waiting on Harry. Harry, could you please just send a text, a quick SMS text message? Not sure he's there. Okay, uh, we'll we'll just skip that part and wait for his response. And then the next part here is which can really save time is oh, notice it says it sent it came through right there, and so his image also came through right on my screen, which is the insurance card, right? And so this is of course a, a a fake insurance card, but you can picture yourself on how you can easily save this image, and then. Uh, paste it right into the patient chart of the file. Um, a couple of other things that can be very helpful is, um, you know, in case you had to close down the practice for some inclement weather at this point, right? Maybe there was a snowstorm or there was a hurricane or whatever that caused the practice to be closed. Well, one of the first things you have to do is communicate with your patients. Well, how can you do it very easily? Uh, notice this broadcast message here. If you click on it, you can actually send multiple patients the exact same message very quickly, right? And because of our integration inside NextGen, you can pick right from the schedule and say that, look, I wanna send a message to all patients who have an appointment, let's just say tomorrow through Friday and send them a message saying, hey folks, we're really sorry, but we have to close down the practice. We'll be in touch with you early next week. So in a matter of 30 seconds, you can send out a message to 40, 50, 100 patients all telling the exact same thing and never lifting the hands at that point. And that's what makes things a lot more easier because in the heat of the moment, you know, you don't have the time to be able to make these phone calls. That's where technology really comes handy. And a key point I wanna highlight here is that when we send out these messages, uh, these are all group messages, but it's not like they're friends where they're all the same group and can see each other. That would be a huge HIPAA violation, right? we would send an individual message to each patient, like, like blind carbon copied. They can't see who else got the message, but you can bunch them up together as a group to send out this message. So that's what makes things a lot more interesting because you can send out these messages to these patients very quickly and they get access to that. Um, additionally, we talked about how you wanna be able to track who from your team is sending out these messages. 
So notice every single message that you send out, it's tagged with the person from your team who's actually sending out that message. So it gives for that good audit trail that allows you to be able to see that, look, okay, staff member A sent the message or staff member B sent the message. So again, it's all for audit trail reasons, but it also allows you for better training. And then you know who from your team is going back and forth with their patients. The last thing I want to show to you is something that can be helpful is templates. So, you know, we talked about these different templates. Well, these are all pre canned templates that we built for you, but you can also manage your own templates. You can add templates, you can create templates, you can edit templates. So think about templates as things you're doing again and again that really can be streamlined by creating a template. So your staff is just picking from one of these options and firing off these messages very quickly. So just wanted to give you a flavor of how texting works. Like I mentioned to you, um, you know, at this point, especially post pandemic, uh, you know, post COVID after everybody's been opened up the practices, the texting has just skyrocketed even inside the doctoral platform. And as I was mentioning you, just this two way texting platform, we send about a million messages a month. That is excluding of the reminders and the confirmations and all of those things. So pure back and forth communication has just increased tremendously just in those last six months or so, because there's an increased need for more communication. So for example, if you have to notify a patient to fill out their paperwork before they come in, well, what a great way to just send them a quick text message. And that's kind of like the reason why we're saying that the market forces are driving patients to adopt technology from texting. So to wrap things up, I mean, just wanted to talk about, you know, in, in this day and age, you know, you want to be able to see more patients and that's where, you know, your, your online presence and the tools to allow patients to book an appointment is very important. You want to automate the practice protocols, which is, of course, the reminders and the confirmations and things that can be done all behind the scenes without much work from your staff and then ensuring safety, especially in the, in the pandemic era, still patients want to know. What are the right protocols, as I mentioned on your website? Please list them out. That way they make they feel comfortable coming into your practice for their appointments. So uh, if you I, I'll pause for a few uh for more minutes for questions. But uh, if you folks are interested in hearing more about Docable, uh, please reach out to your next gen office rep. They will be able to schedule a demonstration, or you can also go visit our website, doctable.com slash next gen. Uh, before I wrap up, I want to thank everyone for taking the time for their busy Tuesday afternoons. I know it's late for some folks in the East Coast. Thank you so much for your time. And then we'll hang back here for questions. Chris, I'll 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 key on you for to see if people have questions there. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Ajit. Um, we we do have a couple questions. One, the first question, I guess, is in order to be able to send messages to patients, do we have to be logged into Doctable, like Doctable.com? Got it. Uh, no, that's a good question. So when we send the automated reminders, you do not have to be logged in into Doctable because we're reading directly from the schedule inside NextGen, and then we can send out those messages uh, behind the scenes. If you want to send one-off messages to patients saying, hey, we need a copy of your insurance card, or hey, we're running a little bit late, then yes, you need to be logged into this patient communicator module inside Doctable. But what I can tell you, having worked with hundreds of NextGen customers, is that your staff will more or less be on this page throughout the day, because this is about to replace anywhere from 40 to 50% of phone calls. So while it's not a requirement, what you've seen is organically staff members do end up logging into Docpool first thing in the morning, because that's where the messages are. Okay, and then can this help with patient billing communication? Uh, I mean, if you want to let people know their balances, yes, uh, though we can't collect the balances through text messaging, uh, but you can definitely send out a message to them saying, hey, folks, you have uh, a balance. Please visit your portal to see more information. So all those kind of communication, absolutely doable. But but then again, we cannot collect the balance for the, from the patient. And then uh, another one here is, how does this integrate with next gen scheduling? So we will look at the schedule pretty much on an ongoing basis. It's pretty real time. So if you schedule a patient in next gen, let's just say now within like a couple of minutes, we will detect it. And so what we're able to then do is then power the reminders based on your schedule, because we do not want to send a patient 
to cancel the appointment, a reminder message saying you have an appointment tomorrow or in an hour. And so we're constantly syncing back and forth between the next gen schedule and us to make sure that we can power the, the right reminders. Okay, and then um, we have a few more flooding in now. Um, let's see. Do we get I a report see, of yeah. those, those who do not have a text message? Or yes, who so do on not our, have texting capability? On our uh, dashboard, you'll actually see which patients do not, are not text enabled. So you can then see that those people those patients either have to be emailed or you have to make a phone call to them. But because just for other people's knowledge, we do a lookup on every single patient to see their phone number. So don't worry if you put your phone number of a patient in their work phone field or cell phone field. What we would always do is we look up all the different phone numbers under a patient uh, demographic and then we'll do a lookup to see which phone number is a cell phone. And when we detect that that phone number is not a cell phone on our dashboard, would indicate that this patient phone number is not a textable phone number. And then uh, are you able to provide to us today any kind of general pricing? You're just a very vague general. Sure, I mean, it, maybe there's a lot of part uh, that we're talking yeah, about. I can give a brief uh, like overview. I mean, of course, there's a few things that's dependent on, which is the number of providers that are there in the practice. But if you look at a very general practice that most of the common times use next gen office, the standard package, which has got the reminders, the confirmations, the texting and the reviews, uh, that comes to about $250 per month. Um, if you look at some of our more advanced toolkit, like we do things like intake forms, the websites and the, the chat bot, uh, that would be about $400 a month. So it can go anywhere from 250 a month for, for the most of our toolkits. And then if you want a little bit more advanced, then it's about $400 per month. And then, um, is this primarily for patient appointments? Uh, a hospital group, not a PCP office, is asking this question, and they want to know um, they aren't using next gen scheduling. How would they benefit from leveraging Doctable? No, great question there too. So uh, now the the integration with next gen, of course, helps us to do reminders and all. But uh, we do have many clients who are non next gen uh, who do not have an integration, right? And so. You can use this patient communicator platform that you see very easily to be able to send out text messages. All the functionality that I showed you right now did not really require um, integration. You can text the patient, you can broadcast a message to patient, you can create these templates, get insurance cards. Think about like if you were going to call a patient to remind them about something, you could use this interface to text them that same thing without requiring an integration. Now you might ask, how do you get the patient uh, contacts uploaded into this patient communicator. Uh, well, I didn't talk about that, but we have a option here. Do you see if you, if you look out here, it's got upload contacts. So you can download it from your EMR and then upload it here. And then easily that becomes all the patients that you see will get loaded inside our platform. But we do have quite a lot of customers without the integration using these texting tools. Uh, they can use it for this. They can use it to get more reviews from patients. So it's not, uh, required that you must have an integration connection schedule. Okay, and it looks like that is it. We'll give it a second just to sure. see if anyone has any last minute questions. This is your chance. If not, um, I want to thank everyone for attending. Thank you all for what you do out there and uh, helping us all navigate the world safely and uh thanks Ajit, for presenting this today i know it's been incredibly helpful and informative oh, there was one so thank question you very much there was one question that came through chris so let me just read through that oh, one yeah um, okay. i think patricia asked as you're going through all of our patient phone numbers to de determine which ones are able to text text it to do you do anything with the numbers i'm 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 thinking patricia you're asking for anything with the numbers that we find that are textable uh, the answer is no, we don't send them a text and all right at that time. We're just getting it for our records to be ready that when you are ready to text to the patient, that's already a certified that this is a textable phone number. So we're not using that to send out any message right off the bat, like a welcome message or anything. It's purely from information so that we already have that information 
when you already track that patient. Okay, I think. That, are the list of numbers being shared in? Oh, I think yeah. Patricia's last question. Oh, are the list of numbers more? being shared yeah. <laughs> anywhere? <laughs> no, no. Uh, the answer is no, Patricia. I mean, we are bound by the BA. So we have to be under strict rules where this is your data, right? So we would not be using this to send out marketing messages and all. Uh, we are a very close and integrated partner of NextGen. So uh, patient privacy is extremely important for us. So it's purely done to get ready to text the patient, but it's not being shared or sold or anything of that sort uh, apart from that. Thank you. Hi, Chris, sorry about that. <laughs> now, no, now can no, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's hard sometimes as the, the questions trickle in. Uh, you have to give people time to type, but thank you all for attending. Thank you, Ajit, for presenting uh, this great topic. And, uh, you know, stay tuned, everyone. We'll send out uh, an update with this recording if you want to rewatch it or, or uh, share it with anyone. And um, we will be updating you all with with more webinars in the future. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, folks. Have a good night.